This project was funded by the Jesuit Refugee Service with support from the SICAP program. The Social Inclusion and Community Activation program is co-funded by the Irish government through the Department of Rural and Community Development and the European Social Fund Plus under the Employment, Inclusion, Skills and Training program 2021 to 2027. This interview was interpreted with the help of Valeria Chromatic. My name is Irina Yevtushenko. Uh, my name is Artyom Yevtushenko. And can you tell me um, where you both come from originally in Ukraine? My Odessa. They are from Odessa. Irina, how would you describe Odessa? Very beautiful and friendly and welcome city. And what was life like before the war started? It was very calm. It was many tourists before. And what would you do then in terms of uh, activities or social life? I was they were in the middle of rehabilitation process with uh, Artem and um, was nice and calm and family life. Artem was doing exercise in Ukraine with like, special ones, so he was improving that time. And talk to me about family then. How long have you been together? 23 года. They are together for 23 years. And do you have any children? It's two kids, so uh, the girl, 20 years, and the boy is 17 years old. And is the boy here in Ireland which you going to school? Yeah, he's now in the school. How does he find Irish school? How does he find Irish ways? Он помимо школы ещё на футбол ходит, и спортом занимается, и понимает Общается и разговаривает неспокойно, но хорошо. He liked that a lot, and he also played football, and he kind of in a good level of English. Not perfect, but he can manage. And Artem, can you remember the day that the war started? No. Can you describe what that was like? Это было 23 февраля. 24 февраля рано утром, когда в городе раздались взрывы, был обстрел военного аэродрома, возле которого мы недалеко живем. It was uh, early in the morning, 24th of February, and uh, it began from the explosion on, on the military airport, uh, military air base, uh, and they live very close to this base. And did it come as a surprise to start of the war? Нет. Были сомнения, но Артем says no because uh, he had doubts that it can happen, but uh, he presumed that it could be. But Irina was. Uh-huh. His, she said yes, it was completely out her understanding. And she didn't believe it can happen. And what was the feeling when it started? Страх. 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 Very scary. Неизвестность. Паника. 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 Emptiness, and they didn't know what to do. Did you believe that it would be over fast, or did you think that it would still be going on at the moment? They didn't expect that it's going to be for a long time. They thought it's, it will finish soon. They were waiting for one year and a half uh, in Ukraine, waiting for the end of the war, and then... Ну, когда регулярные обстрелы, ежедневные тревоги. And then when it's everyday shooting, like missiles, attacks. Страх взял свою. Да. 
they kind of lost something. their uh, fate that it's finished soon and and they decided to leave. So that it was very scary. So. And when you make that decision to leave, then was it a difficult decision? Very. It was very hard for them. Yeah, yeah, it was very difficult decision. Kilometer от нас было несколько разрушено жилых многоэтажек. Was um, in one kilometer from them was a few buildings destroyed. Смерти были. And there was a many people died there, so they decided to move. And as a parent, that must have been extremely worrying. Yes. Да, они сейчас очень рады, что мы уехали. Да, они остались в Украине, in Ukraine. They are in Ukraine, they are, uh, they was worried a lot and they still worried about them, of course, as parents. How in that year and a half did you manage to go about your daily life? It must have been extremely difficult. Да. Ну, очень тяжело. Да. Блэкауты, зима, вот это, как сказать. There was uh, blackouts and uh, winter. No water, no water. Not electric, связи. No power, no, sometimes no connection with, like, internet connection. So it was because of blackouts. Электричество по несколько часов в день. О, через день даже, по 54 да. не было. По всей Украине. Few hours per day, Раски. sometimes all, all day, uh, no power, because it was a schedule of uh, blackouts to save, uh, to save power, because we lost few, uh, few electric station, you know, in Ukraine. That's from me. The city itself then, was the city damaged? A lot in that year and a half. Даже сейчас, вот час назад, Сегодня утром. это недалеко тоже от Две нас. Четыре человека вот уже только вот сейчас убило. Очень много разрушения. Passed away. Много поранен. А вообще... and, and many people hurt. Hurt. В городе несколько торговых центров. Да. Ракетами okay. уничтожены. Монастыри, спас Успенский собор. Да. Few, Много достопримечательностей. Few uh, centers, like shopping centers, uh, destroyed by the missiles, and now it's already also a few. Uh, churches, you know, and uh, like uh, abbeys, like very, uh, very famous places, like in the center of the city. That what it was beautiful. Now uh, it's play, like many things, many destructions there now. Портовый город и когда обстреливают. Да, на морвокзале. Да, у нас портовый город, поэтому обстреливают. It's a port city, so they uh, shoot with the missiles to um, everything which is important there. Uh, they bomb, so it's very loud and dangerous there. Many big houses, um, like many store houses, uh, get damaged. And also private houses. Yeah, and um, also beach, and there is a sea in the city, so there is a beaches there, and uh, they, like, people are not allowed to walk there now, and uh, because it can be attacked from the sea. The, the first days, uh, there was a military ships which was shooting from the from the ship to the private houses on the on the beach like close to the beach and the city itself you know has, has quite a history with russia in 2014 there was an initial attacks on ukraine from russia throughout those years was it building to the start of the war in the last few years or was there ever a time where you thought it was safe 
До Одессы это не доходило. Да. They thought that it's not gonna страдали. Донбасс, come to Иван. their city was more uh, western part of Ukraine then, so they hope that everything will be good in their city at least. And what jobs or what professions did you work in while in Ukraine? Я бывший военнослужащий пограничник. Артем is the ex-military retired Bo- coast station. Coast Guard station. And can you describe what work was like for you during that time? Прослужил в армии, прослужил 10 лет, но уволился до начала войны. He was in army for 10 years and uh, he got retired uh, before war. Нашел лучшую работу. He found another job. Но службу всегда любил. But he loved his military time, military work. And Потом получил травму позвоночника и уже 8 лет не хожу. Then he got uh, his in- injury of his spine. So now he he's disabled to walk for 8 years. And was that an accident at work or was it outside of work? It was accident out of work hours, out of job things. Irina, did you work in Ukraine? I was a child and then I worked as a web designer. I was a content computer, yes, I was a computer, I was a web designer. She she was a home mom first, and then uh, she was a like web designer. There must have been some very happy memories in Ukraine. Семейная благополучная семейная жизнь. Очень много времени проводили с детьми, отдыхали, путешествовали по Украине. Очень красиво в Карпатах. Очень много мест в Украине, куда можно поехать и отдохнуть, не выезжая за границу. Старались по выходным обязательно где-то на море поехать, на озеро поехать. Проводить время вместе. Да. Типа, короче, говорит. Very nice time, very happy time uh, for family. Uh, there, there is a plenty of places to go in Ukraine, so they love Carpathian mountains to go there. And also they uh, try to keep themselves active and go every weekend to the sea to the lake to the... there is a many different nature zones in Ukraine so many things to see также наши дети мы очень горды за наших детей наташа у нас бальными танцами занималась карате участвовала на соревнованиях олежки черный пояс по карате и мы очень гордимся своими детьми we are also very proud of our children because uh, our daughter Natasha, she's a Latin dancer, she's professional and she's very good. And uh, Oleg, who's, uh, who's here uh, in the school at the moment, he's doing karate and he has a belt, what? Black. black belt. Very Not impressive. just any. Any belt, a black yeah. belt, yeah. Black belt. And that takes years of discipline and dedication, doesn't it? Ten, for, he was doing it for 10 years, yeah. And, and he's, I want to add, uh, sorry, <laughs> he's very good here. He's keeping himself uh, very active and sporty. I'm proud of this child. I'm not his parent, but I, I watch this child and he's doing it by himself, uh, training so all day, every day. He's very disciplined. And sometimes uh, children here join him, you know, so like he motivate other children. And has he participated in sports clubs here in Askeaton? Да, его зарегистрировали в клубе, футбольная команда, и он уже ездил на соревнования. Плюс он в школьной еще играет, в сокет. He played football uh, here in Askeaton in the school team and also the member of sport team. Uh, like football team uh, of a skid and then they went to competition even so he's in football team yeah how is he integrating into school then легко он с этим легко справился новый коллектив все новое ну наверное детям легче немножко это переносить 
Он параллельно еще в 11 классе в Украине у нас учится. Украинская школа. Заканчивает последний год. Uh, they very proud of him. He is uh, getting very good because he is doing his Ukrainian school classes and also taking classes here and also football and uh, again exercises by, by himself. So uh, they very proud of him and they think that uh, he's getting on better than his parents. <laughs> Um, is your daughter then currently living in Ukraine or is she elsewhere in Europe? Нет, она в Ирландии, в Дубліне. She's in Ireland. Uh, she lives in Dublin at the moment. Oh, excellent. So it, it's great to you know, have the family here in one country and know that they're all safe. Yeah. So we kind of have one extreme to the other. We've got the urban life of Dublin city and we've got yeah. the rural life of West Limerick. Yeah, Skidan is a great, Beautiful. great town. <laughs> Almost city. <laughs> yeah. And was that a big change for you both? Да, здесь очень спокойно, непривычно. Мы привыкли шум, гам, транспорта много ходит у нас миллионный город, а здесь тихо, спокойно, уютно и очень хорошие гостеприимные люди. The city where they came from, it's over the million of the people. So uh, it's a busy city. And uh, during summer, there is a plenty of tourists. So it's even more than a million. Now uh, they're in a skidden and it's completely different, but it's nice, quiet and safe and the people are lovely. When the war starts then, how do you explain to your children how serious it is and one day we may have to leave you know, our home because of it? Но они уже в том возрасте, когда хорошо это понимают, отчетливо, что происходит, видят, что происходит вокруг, и интернет, интернет, связь. Uh, they have a pretty mature children. They're not children anymore, so they understand what's going on, and uh, they were aware of it before. Uh, they have internet, they have connection, so didn't need really to explain them. After the war started, he stayed a year and a half in your home. It must have been very difficult in that year and a half to watch your home and your city being attacked on a daily basis. Да, естественно, очень было трудно мириться, видеть, что происходит. Самое главное, что нет этому конца. Yeah, it was very hard. It's um, hard to watch how your life is getting ruined and accept that it's very hard and uh, the worst thing we don't know when it will be over so it's still going Narta, was that difficult as ex-military to see Russia put such bombardment on Ukraine? Конечно, конечно тяжело это это страшно, когда видишь из окна как все это происходит летят ракеты, взрывы Гибнут люди. Course, И в какой-то момент, может быть, будешь ты следующей. The next, like any time it can be you. Talk to me then about the decision you made as a family after the year and a half to leave your home. На начало войны я уже не ходил и занимался в зале. У меня в зале был достаточный прогресс. Я даже мог стоять на ногах и делать несколько шагов в день. Когда начались блокауты, нормально или нет? Мы живем на седьмом этаже, отключалось электричество, лифт не работал, и с залом пришлось остановить все занятия. Uh, it was very uh, good improves for him before war, before active attack. He even could stand up and um, do a few like steps. Every day he was doing exercise and like few steps with the support, but anyway he can could move his legs a little bit. 
So it was very good improvement for him. And um, then like big invasion starts uh, and blackout starts. Uh, they were living on the seventh floor, so uh, you need to have elevator to get down and up. And um, they kind of was blocked in their apartment and couldn't do much. So um, he started to uh, go down with his physical shape. So now he's a bit thrown back with all this. И даже в случае, если бы срочная эвакуация была, просто я бы не смог пуститься в безопасное место. And in a case, if it was need to go and hide in a bomb shelter or evacuation or something, he couldn't uh, help it. He wouldn't go nowhere because no elevator, no, no chance. So. И с каждым днем морально становилось все тяжелее и труднее воспринимать происходящее, когда видишь из окна дым, взрывы. And every day it was harder and harder to keep going with that uh, when you see explosions and you see like fire or uh, like you see what's going on and this destruction you can see from your window. Особенно ночью. Mm -hmm. Especially at the night. Поэтому was старше. very scary. Поэтому дочь уехала раньше. And then their daughter went first. А да, потом уже уговорила нас тоже. Уехать. And then she convinced them to go to, so they came after uh, Natasha. When they arrived, uh, she came to meet them. Uh, so they met. Then. And she she can come here from time to time also. What did you know about Ireland before you came to Ireland? It's from me. We have, <laughs> we have <laughs> very good um, education system and uh, they watch Discovery also. And it's like, <laughs> so they love geography and watch uh, <laughs> geographical <laughs> programs. So they knew <laughs> before, yeah. Talk to me about that journey from Ukraine to Ireland. Was it a difficult journey? Was yeah. there many steps in that journey? It was hard, long, It was hard, long journey. No, interesting. What yeah. interesting. We did it for 27 hours. 10 hours we were on a train. 27 hours they were in a train. We were on a train. We were on a Первого сентября в пять часов утра. They were in the way for twenty-seven hours. Вот звуки и обстрелы Десы. Да, как раз. And they left Ukraine twenty-first of September, and it was with the sounds of explosion, and it was scary in Odessa at that time. Да. Наняли микроавтобус, поехали и ехали в Румынию, в Бухарест. Через пункт пропуска Орловка, который, который в этот же день после нашего проезда был, был практически разрушен. They uh, rent a bus and went to Орловка. Румыния. Румыния. Uh, they went to Romania and um, they were on the way, like they get to Romania through border. Uh, Checkpoint Orlovka. Checkpoint, thanks. Okay. F through the checkpoint Orlovka, which was that day destroyed. Like after they passed. Mm -hmm. After they passed. Mm -hmm. After they passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. in Romania. Ah, from Bucharest they flew. From Bucharest they flew. Bergamo. Ber Bergamo, Milan. Milan. They uh, came on the ferry to... Uh, they came from Bucharest uh, to, Bergamo. Bergamo. to Ber Bergamo, which is in Italy, Bergamo. Bergamo. Sorry, no. <laughs> in Italy. And then they were waiting for the next flight for six hours. And then from Bergamo to Bergamo to Dublin, they were flying for, for four hours. The road was almost 27 hours. Two planes, a car and a car, 10 hours. 
two planes, um, ferry and car for 10 hours. So it's like four types of transport was the, in that time. And when you arrived in Dublin, did you have any idea of where you might be relocated to? They had no idea. I couldn't imagine that where they were they would be would be relocated. They were living for two weeks in Port Train. On the territory of the medical center. А потом нас привезли и вот уже пять ну, месяцев. Искали жилье, да. чтобы я мог свободно передвигаться на коляске, чтобы доступность была. Кто? Кто шукал? Вы шукал? Ну, нет. нет. В City West. Я City West was looking for the place uh, for them to move uh, because of special needs of our time. So they were for two weeks in in mm-hmm. a tent, right? Port train. Портрейн в центре чи в палатке? Нет, медицинский центр. Oh, sorry, in the medical center. Medical They center. were Portrain, in да. Portrain in the medical center. Your next step then was Askeaton in County Limerick. Is that correct? Yeah, and the next uh, their place was Askeaton. So Portrain, then Askeaton. And your first impressions of Askeaton and the center here? Маленький, тихий, спокойный, красивый город. They were surprised how beautiful this uh, town is, and uh, it was very quiet and calm and small. <laughs> and uh, they are very happy to have so welcoming people here. That's true. Irish people is nicest, I think. <laughs> and um, it was very... Good for them that uh, their son Alec was uh, very welcoming in the school by children and and teachers. So they're happy about it. And what was the biggest surprise for you? No, наверное, Ирландцы. Yeah, Irish people. Like very open and very uh, like very kind souls. I'd say from all of us, we didn't expect that uh, understanding. Гуляя по улице, все просто всегда здороваются, хотя людей, которых даже не знали, никогда не видели. Very happy to be greeted by people on the street when they don't even know them, but uh, they feel welcome when they just. Uh, Say hi, how are you? <laughs> the, uh, the people, local people talk to them uh, across the street and from the car, they wave from the car. That's true, it's very Magazine, nice. Да, да. And the shop, <laughs> everybody is so chatty and nice. Yeah. It certainly is an Irish way to say hello to people, even if you may not know them. Yeah. 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 Sometimes discuss the weather. <laughs> yeah, actually Small on that talk. point, on the weather, How are you finding the weather here in Ireland? Уже привыкли. Дочь рассказывала, что это не самый теплый здесь климат, но не холод. They kind of got used to that, but uh, the daughter told them before they came that it's not very warm climate, but it's not cold either. So, for myself, for us, it's like spring and autumn all the time. В Украине холоднее. In uh, in Ukraine it's no, much more. colder in winter and much hotter in the summer, and <laughs> here it's mostly same weather all year. Yeah, like, wind and rain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what was the biggest challenge for you as a family? Mm-hmm. No, I don't know. What was most difficult for you? What was most difficult for you? Only the arrival. It's only for them the hardest part was uh, probably to get here to, to like all journey uh, here and если будет возможность вот для реабилитации Артема заниматься реабилитировать the big thing for them also it's rehabilitation of Artem and now here he has not the same um level of rehabilitation how he had in Ukraine so he's a bit in a worse shape than he was so 
you just this is the the main thing that they worry about now have any local authorities or anything given any support to our tem yeah they do they actually gave him this обеспечили всем необходимым uh they provide everything like necessary so, uh, вопрос реабилитации but, это вопрос времени but rehabilitation yeah. it's a uh, long ответ. process and uh require a lot of uh, different um things does Artem have access to a doctor and occupational therapist while he's here has that been provided for him все приезжали сюда смотрели привозили оборудование есть доступ есть с кем общаться they have gp here obviously and um, there is a physiotherapist lisa uh, who uh, also came came here a few times and she's a specialist who works with rehabilitation and i suppose it's seven up and she brought this uh, equipment it's like stand standard. Stand, standard. Uh, standard to stand up and just be standing for a while so it's like have a support for for his knees and everything keep him vertical yeah and have, have you found your physical strength getting that little bit better да я знаю для этого и занимаюсь чтобы не было ухудшения здоровья yeah uh, it's a bit better at the moment and uh, he also has this oh dumbbell dumbbell yes. yeah yeah dumbbell um, so he worked out with his hands also so Good. Uh, yeah and and he's very organized and very disciplined i'd say he's working out every day yeah that seems to be a trait within the family yeah yeah, yeah. that discipline yeah, that's true. They are. <laughs> I think they are military uh, family. Like... <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> um, has anything about the Irish culture surprised you? Well, it's a bit different from Ukraine, of course. No. You have different holidays here. <clears throat> How big is that? Uh, sometimes some holidays you um, like we have it in ukraine but like you have here it's your national holidays for us it's just uh, someone's holidays you know and here it's like a big deal so it's very nice and beautiful uh, like uh, halloween or saint patrick's day uh, which little christmas yeah. they love how you do christmas here how how you um everything like decorated and everything mm -hmm. they, they love it here yeah a bit different way but it's like uh, very cool have you had the opportunity to go to other parts of limerick or even go to seaside towns like ballybunion or visit other parts of ireland ballybunion atlantic Ocean. They were in Balibonian. Hmm. And it's quite a popular destination for people in West Limerick, Kerry. To Bal be honest, it's all because of the bus, I think. Okay. 314, which is the main transport for us here. So yeah. public transport here, very good for disabled people. So hmm. he find it okay to use public transport here. So, What are your hopes for both yourselves and for your children into the future? Перед приездом в Ирландию изначально планировали как минимум перезимовать, чтобы избежать блокаута. They had planned before they came here to stay here for winter because in Ukraine this like winter is the time when we save power because power plants is few of them is under Russian control and they don't provide electric now like uh, to ukraine so we have less power plants and in winter um it's blackouts usually so they planned to stay here during the winter so to avoid blackouts because as they told you seventh floor they couldn't get nowhere so no tak kak 
события и военные действия только увеличиваются на Украине. Украине. And their city is under attack a lot, so their plans changed. Uh, so they stay here for a while. Планов на возвращение. Пока нет. They don't. Как бы не хотелось. Don't. They нет. couldn't make plans to go home at the moment is not the option. So no plans. It's from me. Depressing thing here that we like not here just in this case that we couldn't make we could not make plans because we don't know what next is there any traditions that you try and keep ukrainian traditions while here in ireland готовить украинские блюда they they cook ukrainian food here so oh they cook a lot for someone who doesn't know anything about ukrainian food how would you describe it to me <laughs> it's very, very diverse, like very different. You can eat uh, different food. Yeah, it's very di- diverse. And we have uh, plenty of fish uh, products. Uh, you don't like it here too much. Like sea products and fish, uh, different part of it and we also do broth from from bones from the fish bones yeah, like you don't use bones at all and uh, artem said about uh, borscht which is uh, ukrainian national I've heard of this, yes. food and it's in unesco it like it's uh, uh, it's it's protected protected yes. by unesco yeah and um so it's uh, i think that irish People are very picky with the food, but borscht they like. They they find it good. So I know that Irish people likes borscht. Different fruits, like plenty mm-hmm. of them, and we agricultural country, so we grow a lot. So we have fruits, vegetables, uh, and I think we have more vegetables in our everyday dish. You don't like it much. Some people don't eat it at all. Mm-hmm. And we our our grounds is very good quality, so we can grow a lot. And uh, that's the main food for us uh, that we grow. And it's a big deal for us to grow. And we have a connection with uh, our <laughs> land. We call it mother. <laughs> so. Yeah. Can you see an end to this war? <laughs> we don't know, of course, but uh, now we think that it will be for a long time. Yeah. Очень жаль, что гибнут мирные жители. Very, uh, it's a disaster that people are dying. It's it's very, I don't know. It's the thing that make us like to feel grief and and uh, especially when it's um, civil people and uh, children, of course. Which is crazy. I think every family has someone who died. I mean, not family. I mean, someone who they know. They knew. Yeah, they knew. Мабуть, кожна родина має гость знайомого чи друзів, які загинули. У мене однокласники погибли, сусіди погибли, захищались. The neighbors, uh, they have neighbors, and uh, they were military, and um, there was. Uh, Classmates of Irina who died also, few, few of them. One, the guy who, they know him still, he's just tap on the mine and he, uh, now he has no legs. So, like so many people um, who injured or died. So, yeah, that's crazy and it, and we couldn't imagine that. I'm very sorry to hear that. And they have relatives in Kherson uh, who now has no house because uh, of uh, Russian invasion. They they just got Kherson before. They were kept it in uh, their like, invasion mm-hmm. for a while. And uh, now there's no houses of their relatives and there is no business they had and like nothing. Just, but their life, 
але ж вони живі. But they're alive. You must be extremely proud of your country and of the people in the country to offer such resistance, you know, in the face of adversity. Of course they are. They proud of their country and they proud that they are Ukrainian. They were grateful to uh, Ukrainian defenders who fight and who support this fight. Like uh, the one who keep uh, Ukraine going with uh, water and electricity and other stuff uh, need attention and need to be um, restored when they were destroyed. And so many people work on it to get it going. And uh, they are very grateful to these people, defenders and uh, civil people who work to keep country going. Irina and Artem, it was lovely to meet you both and I wish you and your family all the best and a safe and happy future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.